It's me again. Um, not much to tell you because I haven't done much. We uh, da -da -da, we're getting ready to go down to see my daughter, and uh, we are well, we were supposed to be taking a dog back, but we haven't got a dog to take back because she took it back earlier. And but we had booked the hotel, so we decided we'd still go down and see them. Um, what have I been doing? Well, I'm going to answer some questions first. So let me answer the questions first, Jody. Jodie, hi Jodie. She said, I so enjoy your visits. You inspire and entertain me. But this time you touched a nerve. A popcorn nerve. Lol. I've tried all sorts of popcorn makers over the years, but nothing works as well as my mother's Faberware saute pan with a pretty curved handle. I never burn it and all the kernels pop. Well, okay, just a few barely don't, but most of them do. But they're yummy and they don't break my teeth. Mum got the pan in the 1960s and when she asked if I wanted any of her old cookware, I grabbed this pan just because it's so pretty. A shiny stainless steel. Now that I'm older, I prefer non-stick cookware, but not for my popcorn. The pan will always have a place in my kitchen for one purpose only. Thank you for the pleasant thoughts of my popcorn pan and of my mum. By the way, mum never used this pan for popping corn, so she does, but her mum never did. Um, I had to go and look at what a Faberware saute pan was, and it's very similar to one that we have. And I haven't been, I've just been using a, an ordinary saucepan and I thought what a good idea because it's with it being sorted it's quite big and wide so the heat will spread much better. So I think I might try our saute pan and see what that turns out with that. I'm going to put this in because um, I recorded that a few days ago and um, I tried our saute pan out. Now where's the camera? I've got to find it's a bit dark in here because it's the evening. Oh! You haven't seen her for a while i'll show you her in a minute um the um this is my little white one can't find where the camera is is it there are you there are you there oh you're here anyway um the other day i thought i'd try that the sort the sorted pan that we have i thought i'd try not as good as yours but I, we have a glass lid and i thought oh well, at least you can watch them pop but then I thought of something else. I have one of these. It's a bit dirty because I've just made some popcorn and his lordship and I have just finished eating it. But this, what I did was I put the popcorn in and I put this on the top and then of course I can see it and I shake it, keep lifting it off the stove and, and shaking it and it pops and you can see it popping. The only thing is this just, just fits into the inside of the saute and that, because of that, you've got to be careful that it doesn't tilt like that when you're shaking it and all the popcorn comes out. I've only lost two or three. I haven't lost a lot. But I thought this was a good idea. And it, I, I agree with you. When I use the pan, I end up with lots of little uncooked ones. And his lordship goes mad. He says, what? oh, this is, breaks my teeth. So this one, I only had about three, two or three that didn't pop. And they were nearly popped. Now, I like crunching those, and he doesn't. He says, oh, you break, you break your teeth with those, but I do like to eat them. Um, so, yes, I highly recommend a saute-type pan with something like this on the top if you have to. This need, desperately needs washing, so I'll put it in the wash. And do you know what else I do? Do you know what else I do? I love soy sauce. So, once I've emptied it into the bowl... I shake my soy sauce all over the popcorn. Not a lot, just like you would vinegar, salt and vinegar when, you make, when you're putting on chips. And I don't like a lot of vinegar on chips. And then I just turn them around, swirl them around, and I've got a lovely, if you like salty, if you like a combination of beefy and salty, that it tastes lovely. I love soy sauce. He goes mad because whatever we make, I've got to have soy sauce on it. 
and he may say oh this is a bit bland what we've cooked here and i'm going it's not it's, i love it I really, it's lovely with this soy sauce on so i do like popcorn with soy sauce it's getting a bit dark out there but look at who's here you haven't seen her for a long time she is just enjoying herself having a little sleep resting on her arm aren't you yes she doesn't know that I'm talking to her at all. She just wants to be next to me and she doesn't know, she can't sing, she can't, she can't hear any music. She's just, oh, 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 what's going on, she says. What's going on? <laughs> you mentioned that you like the popcorn and that you do have pop popcorn when Angela mentioned that she had popcorn I said to his lordship I said oh I said Angela was saying that she has popcorn and I said I think we should have we should start having popcorn well whenever he reads whenever he hears something like that he has to look it up to find out what it says about the food that we're going to eat especially because we're both being told we've got to reduce the cholesterol he's got he's his mother is a pre pre-diabetic or his mother is slightly diabetic like a um I don't know what you call it. She's diabetic in her old age and he has ha been tested and he's been told he's a bit diabetic. So he's basically almost cut out all sugars. He used to have half a sugar in his coffee. Now he doesn't have any. He tries not to have sweet stuff, but on the odd occasion he still does, like his mother does. But... Um, these are all things that we've got to change. So when we, when we just, when I told him about you, Angela, and your popcorn, he looked it up. And interestingly, we found this out. And when we found this out, his lordship said, right, we're both going to have popcorn from now on. We looked it up and we said, it says, what is the benefit of eating popcorn? And it says, in, in addition to fiber, Popcorn is also a good source of polyphenols, which are antioxidants that have been linked to better blood circulation and digestive health, as well as a potentially lower risk of certain cancers. Another health benefit of popcorn is its high sati is its high satiety satiety satiety. Now, what it? I'll have to find out what that means. <laughs> Because of its high satiety or satiety, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but I looked that up to find out what's so good about a food with a high satiety or satiety. And it says foods that score higher than 100, 100 were considered more filling, while foods that scored under 100 were considered less filling. In short, eating foods that score higher on the satiety index can help you eat fewer calories overall so if you want to lose weight get the popcorn out get it out get your popcorn maker out get your popcorn pan out uh, Angela says she's got a popcorn maker for the microwave which she uses we don't have a microwave yet well we did have I'll have to tell you the story about that we had a microwave but uh, we Oh, it's a good few years ago that we had this microwave. <laughs> I love, we love, we both loved the microwave. And I think it was when we were working. Uh, we came in from work and we decided to have jacket potatoes. So we prodded the, the potatoes, put these two fairly average, kind of that size potato into the microwave. And he went upstairs to his room to, to do something with his music. And I put them in the microwave and then I thought, oh, I'll go up and have a word with them. Now, they were supposed to be in the microwave for 20 minutes. I went upstairs and I must have spoken to him for about five minutes for whatever it was. And then I went back downstairs. And when I walked into the kitchen, the place was full of smoke. And I thought, what on earth has been happening here? So then I went and looked to what it was coming from the microwave. And when I looked in the microwave, the microwave had stopped working. And inside, the smoke had gone, obviously. The room was full of smoke, but there's nothing in the in the microwave by then. So when I opened the door, there were two pieces of potatoes that were like 
bits of charcoal and they're, they're reduced to completely nothing and just two little pieces of charcoal like a, two pieces of coal and so I shouted up to his lordship I said you can't have jack of potatoes because we're, the, we've blown the microwave up don't know why it happened I think obviously the microwave was ready to go anyway so we then got rid of the microwave and then he said don't think we need it we don't need it so we never had a microwave after that until every time the kids came I mean the youngest one is now five years old and she, when when her mum came when she was baby she said where's the microwave I need to heat up milk up and we said we haven't got one <laughs> you haven't got one you haven't got one what are we going to do and then my daughter-in-law said the same thing where's the, where's the microwave we're going to you know we're going to heat the milk up and you can't I haven't got one <laughs> And I said, well, we used to use a pan of water, boil some water up and put the bottle in there. But, And they said, what? <laughs> so that's what we did, didn't we, ladies? Used to put your bottle... I, I breastfed my kids till, till they were about one and a half, I think. And um, But when I did do bottles, I always used to put them in hot water. And, of course, they're not used to that with them having microwaves. And... Um, so anyway, we might get a microwave again because with the reduction, with the increase of electricity in the UK, um, which are, which have almost trebled in price, uh, I think we're going to have to, he said he, he might consider a microwave because that will cook things faster. Um, not that we cook very much, we tend to eat a lot of um, salads and stuff, especially in the summer, so we wouldn't need much of it anyway. So... Foods that have a high satiety or satiety, they are they help you eat fewer fewer calories. So if you're hungry, have some popcorn, and that will stop you eating. I must tell my my granddaughter that because she's got puppy fat. She's just turned adolescent. Ah, bless her, she's got big bust. She's got big. She's very shapely. She's like me. She's got the shape. It goes in at the waist now. She's not really hippie. But she has got a big bust and she likes to wear like little uh, crop tops. And of course, she doesn't like to hide them. Not that she's wanting to sell herself, but she says, well, if I've got, a, if I've got one, I've just got to wear, wear it. You know, I like to show myself my shape. So um, so anyway, she's, uh, she's put a little bit of weight on and she's trying to lose it. So I might tell her that popcorn's a thing to make. So the other day... We were driving in the car and I got a text message from my nephew and he said, Auntie Micheline, my family, I've, I've just taken my family to see, what were they called? Um, to see, what were they called? God, to see, to see rumours of Fleetwood Mac. And he said, they're really good. And he said, I've just looked it up and they're in Darlington where you live on Wednesday. And he said, so if you want to get some tickets, see if you can get some because they're really worth watching. So we're in the car and I'm quickly, I suddenly, I messaged back and said, oh, thank you. I'll have a look. And I managed to get two tickets and they were right up in the upper circle. And it said on the front row, but they were, it said that viewing was, was uh, limited or something. And his, his lordship said, well, they could have told us that one before we actually bought, bought the tickets because they didn't tell us until after we paid for the tickets. So anyway, I was sitting. It was actually good because we were sitting on the balcony on this thing. It was like a raised wall. So we could lean forward like that and watch over the top down at the bottom. And this band, uh, they were, at the start, they were introduced on a, on a backing film by Mick Fleetwood. And he said, he recommended that you would end, he said, you'll have a great evening watching them. And they were absolutely wonderful. We were we really enjoyed it. So if anybody's ever seen Fle this rumours of Fleetwood Mac, uh, you will probably know what I mean. If you haven't seen them, if you're a Fleetwood Mac fan, go and see them if you get a chance because they are very good. The other week we went to see Andy Fairweatherlow, and he's made a couple of songs. I I mean. Barbara, our friend, said, um, do you want to go and see Andy Fairweather? Oh, he's on it nearby you in the next town to you. And I said, really? Andy Fairweather, of the, with, who was in the band Amen Corner. And I liked a few of his songs, but I was thinking, well, he hasn't done much. But actually, when we went to see him, he had done quite a lot of songs. And he's a flipping good guitarist. And he then told us that he actually accompanied George Harrison on a tour in Japan. He... 
he was a backing guitar for um for Eric Clapton for for a long time or in he accompanied Roger Waters who was from Pink Floyd in a few of his gigs so he he is a good guitarist so if you ever get the chance to see Andy Fairweather Low he was a very good entertainer he's a 60 or something or 71 even more no he's 71 or 73 but he still played a mean guitar i must say and the other one that we went to see was uh oh this was an interesting one during lockdown my daughter no just after lockdown my daughter decided that she wanted to get tickets to take the girls to the isle of Wight festival because she doesn't live very far from where that is and so we were watching it. She, she took them, she wanted the girls to experience the first uh, music festival. So she took them there. They went on the Saturday and uh, they came back on the Sunday morning, I think, or Sunday lunchtime. But on the Sunday evening was the band called The Script. And we thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed watching it on TV. So I said, oh, I wouldn't mind going to see those in concert. So I looked it up to see... If they were playing and they had a gig coming on this year that when i was looking it was last year they had gigs this year so i said oh i could go and see see them play well the tickets were expensive they were 140 pounds each and i don't know about you but i thought that was quite expensive so i so, thought and when i mentioned it to his lordship he says i'm not paying that so the more i kept thinking about it thinking about it then i thought you know i'm gonna get some i'm gonna get two tickets for us to go because we've been locked in for two years, let's go and enjoy ourselves at a concert. And so that was on about three or four weeks ago. And it was, I have to say, I think he was, he suffered a bit. He said, he, he admitted that he suffered a bit with his mental, uh, he suffered a bit uh, mentally over the lockdown. And he said he just wanted to get out and he wanted to make, he, he, he appreciated that everybody, a lot of other people had mental had suffered suffered with their stress and with mental problems and he wanted everyone to have a damn good time and he did he really oh it was fantastic and i was sat next to a lady who was my age and she she didn't say much at first and then she he, he actually came, for two of the songs he came up into the audience and onto our level because we were in the balcony and he sang two songs and she turned to me and she said, he does this every time. And I said, oh, have you been to see him before? She said, oh, I've been lots of times. But she said, this is the best ever concert I've ever seen. He had gone over the top to make sure that everybody had a good time. And he kept saying, I want you all to enjoy this. I really want you all to enjoy it. And he's Irish. So everybody likes Irish people. And so they were all, you know, everybody was joining in. They were singing away to his songs. Really, really good. And his lordship and I thoroughly enjoyed that. So we've got two other gigs booked. We've got one to see the ELO experience, which is going to be quite fun. And we've got one to see Catch Me If You Can band. It's a band called Catch Me If You Can, and they play a lot of 60s music. So I figured that would be quite interesting to go and see them sing all the songs that we used to sing when we were 18, 16 and 18. So... Um, I'm looking forward to that one and I'll let you know what it was like when we when we get after we've been. So let's get back to the rest of the video. Anyway, what's the next question? Let's find the next question. Naked double J? Naked double J? <laughs> yeah, very close to my bus size that. I think I'm a double G. E F G H I J. G, yeah, double G I am, probably. Uh, she says, hi, I'm a new subscriber, so welcome to the clan. Um, Anne Marshall, now Anne told me something about a dress she made. This is, this is going on with a continuation of, um, it's a, it, go, it goes on with a continuation of the things about me saying I don't wash things. Now, uh, and quite honestly, she said, this is what Anne said, I spent hours making a dress to wear at a 50th birthday party. When I washed it at 40 degrees, it shrank and wouldn't fit me anymore. It was fully lined as well because it was the it was semi-see-through. I've always washed my fabric since then. And I can well understand why you did that. Um, I would be a little bit, if I was lining my, for me, 
Not that I've ever done it very often, but if I was lining a dress, I think I would find that more risky for to wash because sometimes the one thing that I have noticed, I've done this once, I bought a dress and it had a, a satin, some sort of satin lining. And when I washed the dress, the dress, the outer dress was fine, but the inner satin liner, lining shrank and it went all creased so that every time I had to wear it, I had to really press that creased uh, lining. That stretched it back, but it was still a bit shorter. And I just thought to myself, right, I think it, that was an experience I had at a young age. And it made me realise that if I'm going to have double double types of fabric in it, I'd probably get a dry clean. But that's the kind of thing that if I had done that, yes, I'd have felt the same way. And I'd, if, that, if I'd made the dress... And I had thought I'd be confident enough that it would wash well and it didn't. I would probably be doing the same as you are and probably be uh, washing every every piece of fabric as it is. Um, Karen Lowe says, I love popcorn too. I think it's lower in calories than potato snacks and is high in fibre. So we've just said that. And yes, so everybody, popcorn. And if bread is going out of fashion with Ukraine, see if you can get some corn i don't know if it's going to be available though because i think ukraine makes the corn but in america you'll be able to get your corn from the usa um you got me in stitches you've sent me a few little messages um you said uh, you've been watching a few of my videos you've been catching up and you the latest one you said was great listening to you i rarely ever pre launder fabric with the exception if i make something for a client and i'm not sure of how they do their laundry my new makes I run through by hand a couple of times and then they go into the machine and at a correct temperature and cycle and spin C, spin, spin speed. Um, then we have, let me stop that. I've got to keep stopping it because I'm doing this on my phone. And I found my camera. I said to his lordship, I said, you know, I said, I'm losing everything. I've lost my camera because we've moved everything. Everything is piled up. All my, I've told you as many times, in the back here, there's stuff here, there's stuff on the back here. Um, I'm still disorganised and um, his lord, we've been moving furniture around in the house. And because we've been moving furniture around, I can't find anything. And I can't, I've lost a little pair of scales, a little set of scales. Just, they were just little flat ones, those little flat ones that you would put a ball on. Little flat pair of scales that I wear my parcels on, the, my eBay parcels. Can I heck find it? Um, and what was I telling you that for? I don't know why I was telling you that. Can't remember what I was telling you that for. I was telling you that because can't remember but anyway uh let's go on to the next one oh three uh, uh, yes i don't <laughs> i happened to say to his lordship i can't find my camera i can't find anything i can't find the scales i can't find the camera i can't find this i can't find that and he says well i've got your camera it's upstairs in my room and i said well thanks for telling me so somewhere i'll get his one of these days i'll go upstairs and take his bed take the camera out of his room and then i'll be able to use it again Right, Bonne Bonert, what a lovely name, Bonert, bon, bon, Bonert, Verne, Verne, what is that French, Verna, Verna Bonner. Um, you were saying, I didn't know that you went to fashion design school, uh, that's awesome and I love all of the colour and other designs that you shared, um, I did fashion design for three years, uh, it was a three year course and it was in two parts, parts one and part two. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. We um, we created, we just did our own designs. We created our own patterns. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Because while we were clearing out one of his lordship's room, I came across some of my uh, design stuff. So in a vlog later on, I might show you it. Yes, so I did that course and I'm going to tell you a bit more about it when uh, when I get round to showing you all the, all the bits that I did. Um, where Susan Perkins says, Where I live in Hertfordshire, we can get to London in about 25 minutes, you lucky thing. So we've dragged my husband to the Rainbow Fabric Shop and Fabric Land. I love going there. Not sure he's too keen, 
but as long as we have a pint after shopping, he's happy. There's a good pub down the road from Rainbow Fabrics. I always, I learned something. I got wise to this. And I don't know, you're probably all old and you'll all give me your own little ideas. I got wise to the fact that if you take your husband or your partner or whatever shopping, you have, and, and you know that they get bored. So what I do is, if they're going for something themselves, I do, I used to do two things. One was, if we were going to buy something for me or I wanted to have a look around my shops and then he wanted to get something, I made sure his something was the last thing we bought so he had to have the patience to go around with me. The other thing that I did, and my son loved it, because I hated... If we went to Newcastle and I, and we, I would go... If I went to Newcastle, I'd go with my two kids, my daughter and my son. This is years and years back when they were in the sixth form, when they were 18, 19. And my daughter wanted to go into shops to try on all sorts of clothes. My son wanted to go to record shops and look at music and guitar shops and things. And I wanted to go and look at fabric. And I thought, I don't want to be traipsing around all these shops with my kids. So what I did was, would go to, I think it was usually Phoenix, which is a big department store. And I'd say, right, we'll meet outside this store in this entrance in two hours time and then so they'd all rush off and funnily enough my son who's now in his late 40s he said mum he said I just much prefer the way you used to do it because what now he goes shopping his wife waits for him outside outside the record shop and he says I feel pressed to get out get done and dusted quickly and uh, he says I just love it because I knew I had two hours that I had I could do what I wanted and then you'd meet up and then what we did was when we met up we then went for lunch or went for a meal or a cake or a coffee or something. And they loved it that way. My daughter could go and try clothes on. I used, to, I used to give them a tenner or something and say, go and spend it. And he'd come back with an LP under his arm and she'd come back with um, with a dress or a top or something that she'd bought. So that, that, that suited us. So Libra was amused by my jumper that cost an arm and a leg that had shrunk down to the size of a dolly's jumper. Um, it was an expensive one, I think. At the time, it must have been something like cashmere. Oh, it was it was some really expensive wool, and I think it was cashmere. And um, I have this awful, awful. Um, I still do it. I still do not read the wash labels on anything that I stick in the washing machine, and I've gone wrong with that one and another one I think the two biggest failures was that jumper and the other one was his lordship's son who had bought himself a lovely silky shirt and he'd stuffed it in the um, in the washing I didn't look to see what it was what it was made of or that it was silk because had I realised it was silk I'd known that it can shrink and I put it in I think at the time it was something like 50 degrees or something and when it came out it was so small it shrank and of course I felt so guilty and I said I'll buy you a new one but after that I told him I said that's one mistake that I will not do again because I said you can wash your own clothes and so after that he started washing his own clothes and I felt a lot better for that I got three messages from Alison Williams and Alison Lovely to hear from you again. I gather you've been quite poorly. And I did wonder because Alison sometimes sends me little videos of animals through Instagram and I love getting them. And then she stopped. And I sent a couple to her but I didn't get any response back. Usually we both say, oh, it's lovely. Oh. And of course she stopped and I thought, oh, I hope everything's okay. And I didn't want to pester you anymore, Alison. So I stopped sending them. Instead, I sent more and more and more to my grandchildren, the two girls, my two granddaughters. I sent more and more to my two granddaughters. And uh, so they are being amused by these animal videos. Uh, but I do hope, I think you're on the men, but I think your life, you're basically, as we're all finding out, is um, life changes with health. And I think you've had a few health issues and uh, steroids, you're saying, have made you put a bit of weight on on your, on your stomach area. And what you found is you like the, the I showed you a thing where... One of the T-shirts I have has a little triangular inset at the side and you could do that with your T-shirts if they're getting a bit tight. You can put the triangular inset in for them. Um, 
Now, and here's a lovely one from Laura Jones. Sorry, I keep looking down here because on my laptop because they've got my phone here. Laura said, lovely chat, Miss you. I have memories from my teenage years of buying fabric and sewing new garments without pre-washing. Do you remember I was telling you that if I was when I was a teenager, I used to go and buy the fabric, make a garment and then go out and wear it. Once unbeknownst to me, my brother entertained my date for half an hour while I, and while I was sewing buttons and buttonholes on a shirt jacket. They didn't disturb me so I could finish sewing. After arriving at the party in my new trousers and jacket, I realised that I'd only cut open one buttonhole. <laughs> well, at least you must have been able to go out with your jacket open a bit because then people wouldn't know. I'll tell you what, um, suit jackets. I used to always wonder about suit jackets because there was a fashion where you had, when you wore suit, men wore suit jackets, they had events at the back. Two Instead of having one in the middle, they had two on either side. And the uh, whenever you bought a new suit, it was always sewn up. So a lot of people used to buy these jackets and never undo the stitches where, where the vent was sewn up. And the reason why it was sewn up was so that while they were packaging it to go on to the, to the retailers, it wouldn't get open and twi bent or creased or whatever. And so many people went away with, went off with their suits and attended weddings with these, um, these vents closed up and so the pockets as well just you couldn't put your hand in your pocket because they'd sewn them up um and i bet you a lot of people forgot to undo the stitches there sheila snaps hi sheila she was saying that she liked the blouses uh she says we wear shirts so often that we forget about a nice blouse i too have been thinking of them um i'm quite i'm still determined to get this linen this linen fabric and I found how to do it because I think I can't get it when I use my Google search, my Google uh, window. But when I go to another browser, I can I can get um, Dalton Fabrics to open up. So I'm going to get two lots of fabric from them. Um, Deb Cobb says, I've never washed my fabric before making anything. I worked in a shirt factory many years ago and they never washed the fabric before cutting out the garment. It was rolled onto a huge long table and cut. It was then sent to different sections for the sewing. Even before this, my mum and I never washed the fabric first. I am like you. If I had to do all the prepping before the making, I would not have been sewing. Um... Deb, you remind me, one of my friends when I used to live in, in Northumberland, she worked for, I think I've mentioned it before, she worked for Hepworth's the Tailors and they made suits for, they made suits for Marks and Spencers and for Burton's and, and other companies and they made dresses and, and she said the same thing. She said, we don't cut, you know, because I, being a sewer at that time, I was saying, how do you do it? And she said, well, one day I'm doing all the pockets and then the next day they moved me on to lapels and then the next day they moved me on to trousers. And she said that they rotate because they, to stop them from being bored off or to, to break the monotony of, of the, the bits that they're doing. But she, And in conversation, she said the same thing. She said, just come straight off the roll, they cut it, they make it. it go, once it's assembled, it's put on a hanger and it's sent to Marks and Spencers or or to Hepworth. So um, if they don't wash it, why should I? But, you know, at the end of the day, up until... Up until I came onto YouTube and found all these videos, these YouTube videos, I, I kind of when somebody said you, I always wash my fabric, my my jaw just dropped, and I think it's a bit like Chinese whispers. If one person says they wash their fabric and you follow them and you like them, then you think to yourself, oh, maybe I should be washing fabric, and then if they wash fabric, then they might say, oh, maybe I should wash fabric, and so. Uh, one thing I'd be interested to get an answer from would be Esme, because en Esme is a lecturer in a fashion school, um, and I would be interested to know if she would recommend washing the washing the fabric beforehand, because they don't do it in sewing, they don't do it on the sewing bee. So maybe you know, be interesting to see what her answer would be. So if anybody knows Esme or if anybody sees Esme, ask her that question and let me know. Vicky H, hi Vicky H. Um, she says, as I'm watching you, I'm pinking edges of fabric to wash it. All cottons that have been boxed away for ages. I've decided to get all my fabrics out in the open so I can see what I have and use it up. 
I'm dreading having to iron it all. Any newish fabric I'm not wet washing. Just musty smelling fabrics. Over the last couple of years of quarantine, I've sold a lot of charity items and made a dent in my stash. But I'm turning 70 and need to get my stuff sorted and either use it or pass it on. If I make some quilts, they might get passed on. Uh, and shouldn't keep that should keep me busy and out of trouble for a while well that that uh, that's a uh, that's a a vlog in itself vicky because um there's several things i want to talk about with that but i think i'm going to um i'm going to keep it as a separate vlog in the in in the next few weeks because um yes we all have too much fabric and there's some questions and answers i need for that and so watch this space because um, it, it's something that I've been considering doing a little vlog about, having all this fabric that we've got. Um, I've left you kind of in limbo, not knowing what I was talking about, but bear with me. You will get to know soon. In my clearing out, I have come across all of these magazines that I've got. They are sewing magazines. And just to give you an example, I've batched them into fives. Five. Let's uh, sew today. Sewing. This is an example of one. Sewing. Sewing. Sew today. And sewing. Now there may be more sew todays in some of them, but I have. Uh, I've been batching them, and I was going to list them on my eBay. I just want rid of them, so I'm not. But what I was going to suggest is. I start them off on eBay, I, I, well I've already sold three batches and I thought oh I'm, maybe I should give you lot the chance to if you want them. Uh, I've got batches of five, five in the in the in the pack, it's quite heavy and uh, batches of five I'm selling them at 99 pence and uh, the postage is the most expensive to be honest. The five magazines I'm selling for 99 pence, but the postage is 3.35 for economy second delivery, second class post. I'll probably stick to posting them to anyone in the UK. I have one, two, three, four, five batches, and it's a case of potluck. If you would like to have one of these five batches, message me at the um, message me below. Or email me at the email address below and the first, it's going to be a first come first serve so whoever the first one is message me or email me and if you message me I'll get in touch with you and ask you for your, for your delivery address but there's one two three four five batches of magazines really good magazines but I just haven't got the room for them I've, I think I've uh, some there won't be any patterns in them I doubt there might be in a couple oh I've dropped them all on the floor. <laughs> but the, but um, if you're interested, put your name down below. Let me know. Got a lot to do. Oh, and um, is it Louise? I have got some fabric coming, so might be able to get your pattern started soon. Although I'm going down to see my daughter first, so I'll do it when I can. Um
so there I've, I've just about done there so I'm going to love you and I'm going to leave you and I'll catch you next time